Good evening. Oh, I pressed the wrong button. Good evening, J2. How you doing? Good evening, indeed. Anyone else who may be out there? I'm still full of cold. I've got a really, really sore nose. You know, when you've been constantly blowing and wiping. Oh. Honestly, what a fucking rotter of a day I've had, man. <laughs> I know you're aware of it, J2, because you're on the fancy beam. Oh. That night there. Oh, so yeah, I'm glad I got home. If it was... If it had happened in daytime, I'd have probably risked changing the wheel myself. So I know how to do it, but it was late. It was very dark. Uh, we were in, in a part of the uh, motorway with no headlights or anything. And yeah, I wasn't ready to get like my leg ripped off by a truck. So we had to stand already ill in the freezing fucking North York, uh, East Yorkshire cold. Or was it West Yorkshire? It was near Pontefract, so I'm guessing that's still technically West Yorkshire. Anyway, it was fucking cold. Uh, to stand for an hour and a half, which admittedly I've heard horror stories of people standing waiting for recovery for hours and hours, hours on end. But like, you're not allowed to sit in your car while waiting, which makes sense, because if obviously if a truck goes into the back of your car because it's not paying attention, then it's going to take you and your passenger with you. So it was a bit crap. It was a bit crap. Crappy day all around. Uh, obviously, no one likes going to funerals. Been to far too many funerals this year. Never mind this fucking life. Uh, and then, yeah, that happened on the way home. It's actually pretty fucking scary having a blowout on the motorway. I've never had it happen before. Um, I've had flats before. Both in my cars and in friends' cars, which I've been able to change. Uh, like one I had outside my old house and one happened on a kind of quiet residential street in my friend's car. Uh, but I've never had it happen in the middle of a fucking motorway before. <laughs> I was in the middle lane and something... We were, <laughs> so I was, I, was, I was in the car with my friend Kira. So the, the funeral I went to today was for an old uh, university friend. Um, died of a... a oh! Don't you Thank you so much for the 38 month resub, Alan. Much appreciated, as always. Oh, what, well, Max in J2, while you are here, you will notice that your VIP badges have gone. This is not a reflection on yourselves. I love you both dearly. Um, but I've been thinking about doing this for a while. I've removed all uh, VIP badges. I don't like the idea that some of my members of my community are more valued than others. I love you all. So I decided to remove all VIP badges. I hope you're okay with that. And yeah, go to bed, Valen. Um, I'm just telling the, the brief story today. So yeah, a friend died recently. They had cancer. The chemo had failed. So we knew this was coming, but it still happened incredibly suddenly. Um, to the point a few of us were, were on about meeting up to say hello and probably goodbye to Jasper. Um, but I didn't realize, I, I didn't ask, because you don't, you, don't, you don't ask what type of cancer someone's got. I just, I, at least I've never done it anyway. But we found out in the service that it was a, f a fucking nasty, vile, horrible form of cancer that I've never heard of. And is apparently so rare that a lot of medical professionals have never heard of it either. Um, so yeah, it was really nasty. And Jasper, although when I lived with Jasper, Jasper was called Amber. Um, I never met Jasper, I only knew Amber if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, really nice guy. Uh, made excellent cookies. We'd always, because there was 10 of us living in the house in our second year of uni, and he would always make great cookies for everyone when we had movie nights and stuff. It was, uh, um, it was, it was nice. But yeah, so they, 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 they so funeral of that today. Uh, I've, I've been ill all week. I've picked something up in the doctor's office on Monday morning when I went to the waiting room, I think. Still feeling a bit fucking ropey. And then, yeah, middle middle row, middle motorway blowout. Uh, it started, me, me and Kira, my friend who lived, who, that was, that was the story I'm telling. As you can see, I'm still full of snot and just going around in circles. But on the drive home, uh, Kira and I had listened to Pink Floyd The Wall, because it's a mutual adored album of ours. And then she was flicking through my CD pouch in my car and spotted Joseph in the Amazing Technicolor dream coat, which my brother bought me for Christmas like last year, and I still haven't listened to it yet. Uh, and I was like, oh, fuck yeah, I've been meaning to listen to that for ages. Whack it on. So I fucking whack it on. And we're both singing Joseph in the Amazing Technicolor dream coat down the motorway. Um, I think we were on 
the song where they were selling Joseph into slavery. Spoiler alert for anyone that's never listened or seen Joseph in Amazing Technical Drinker. Uh, it's like, I am handsome, I am smart, I am a walking work of art. And this, a, a weird noise happened. It's sat going, Ugh. and I thought it was because I mean, we were going like 70, 80 miles an hour, whatever. I thought it was because we'd hit a different road surface. Anyone that drives on motorways will know if you hit like a certain grainy road surface, it will alter the sound that your vehicle makes. But I noticed that there were patches without this new road surface and the noise was still happening. And so it is literally as I turned the stereo down to try and get a better understanding of what it was I was hearing. It's like, oh, fuck. Um, and obviously the vehicle becomes very unresponsive. It's windy as fuck out there anywhere today. Um, so I was kind of struggling with the wind anyway. And I was like, oh, shit, this is this is bad. And I thought cause it's a new car, a new car to me. It's an old car, but it's a new car to me. And I thought like my fucking exhaust had fallen off. Um, and I was uh, getting rather adrenaline fueled she was i didn't panic but i was like oh fuck this is serious so uh, on with me hazards and obviously the people behind me must have seen the because it was the rear driver side wheel must have seen it pop out and um they, they all backed off and started flashing me as if to say you know you're free to move over so i moved over to the hard shoulder uh turned the engine off got out expecting to see like my fucking exhaust pipe somewhere on the motorway behind me but got out and saw that the uh, the wheel had exploded uh, in fact I can probably show you just a sec because I took a photo when, when the RAC guy finally arrived after an hour and a half in the freezing cold uh, which is fine because obviously they've got shit to do I guess we were a massive priority although they said we were a priority because it was uh, side of the road right how do I show this Give me a moment, friends. You know I'm not that technical. So I don't need to open it in paint. So I need to open it in photos, you fool. Open with photos. Right, let's get that to the other monitor. Okay, this should work now. So if I press, there you go. Hey, so that is what remains of my wheel once the um, delivery guy, the delivery guy, <laughs> the recovery guy had come and fixed things. Um, so I bought the car like two or three months ago uh, and in, at the end of September it had its MOT and there was not a single advisory so all four tyres were in excellent condition. Uh, there's absolutely no reason why that should have blown out. So all I can think of is I've either somehow uh, damaged the integrity of the rubber um, by r running over something like a nail or a, like a bit of glass has got himself embedded in the in the tire, or there's just been a freak circumstance whereby. As I've been driving along, something's like swept under my car and just hit that wheel at that point. It could have been anything. It could have been a pine cone. Or you'd think that would get absolutely destroyed by the way. Anyway, uh, luckily, I had a spare in the back of my, um, in, in, the, in the boot. So when I rang the RAC, because I'm covered with my uh, car insurance and it doesn't affect my claims, thankfully. When you sign up for your insurance, they say, do you want to pay an extra, like, £8 a month for roadside? And I was like, yeah, fuck it, I'll do that. Um, but, yeah, so they said, oh, because you've got a wheel, you're all sorted, you know, we'll come and do it. I even said at the end, I said, like, so who, how do I sort out payment? And he said, oh, it's all done. I said, if it wasn't authorised, I wouldn't be here. So I said, that's quite nice. Can I zoom in on that? Oh, yeah, I can. Yeah, look at that. It's absolutely fucking shredded. I really don't know what's happened there. But luckily the spare in the back was a full wheel, not a safety wheel where you're limited to like 50 kilometers or whatever. Um, so uh, it's, it's not like a, a huge essential thing to get a new wheel, but I really, really, really want one in the back just in case this ever happens again. I've also realized that I need a better breakdown kit in the back of my car. Um, yeah, I don't know, J2, I really don't know. Um, but by the time I got home, I was I, I, I got in, I got in bed and I just blacked out. 
uh, and I woke up about 11 p.m., something like that. Um, went to Tesco, got all the food for Christmas dinner, so that's all ready to be dropped off to my brothers tomorrow. Got back, laid in bed, started watching some YouTube shit, and I was like, I need to fucking... Uh, I need to, you know, uh, just vent and and whatnot. I don't know what make it was, to be honest, Max. I didn't actually pay attention to that. I can't really tell from this. Either. It's in the boot of my car, so I can find out. I don't know if the wheel bit is salvageable and I just need a new tyre. Even then, new tyres are about 100 quid these days. Um, I'll find out after Christmas when I take it to my local garage and say, hey, look what happened to me. Um, I don't know why I'm, I'm zooming in. You can't see that. <laughs> I'm trying to see that there's nothing on there that highlights what make it might be. It says type there. Ra, ra, re, ra, air. I don't, I don't fucking know. Uh, and then when uh, when he when he replaced the uh, yeah, it's shaking because I'm. I want to say I, I, I'm heavy, so when I move, I'm not even touching the desk. Um, I, I don't think they were cheap. I honestly don't know. Uh, I've done motorway traveling before at speeds well in excess of say 70 miles an hour in that car, uh, but it's uh, I've never I've never had a blowout. Who knows? But yeah, uh, when uh, when we got back in the car finally, battery was flat because <laughs> we'd had the, the fucking hazards on. So I was like, no, no. So the guy, the RAC guy, was about to pull away. So I got the car. I was like, ah! I was like yeah, my engine won't start. He got out laughing. He was like, yeah, give me a sec. Pop the hood. Did the uh, old jump start thing. And by the time I got back to Hull, my uh, battery was recharged, which is nice. But yeah, I need some better kit in the back of my car. I've got a, a reflective triangle. I have a big, um, uh, I have a big uh, luminous jacket. Uh, what I need is water, snacks, and preferably a fold-out chair. So I've got a camping chair, which is actually right outside my room as we speak, because uh, Valen's having a big old tidy for the imminent arrival of McSteffels and her son. Uh, for Christmas tomorrow, so this is, I'm going to put that camping chair in the in the boot and just keep it in there. Uh, maybe not a sleeping bag. I don't particularly want to stay out there all night. I do have a tent in the back of my car, uh, but yeah, a blanket might be a good idea. I could put my Monster Munch blanket in there. This is very very soft and cozy, and by far the best flavour of Monster Munch. Pickled onion posters leave the halls. <laughs> Although I will accept flaming hot. Uh, yeah, also the, the, the thing is shaking. My, my cam is mounted on top of one of my monitors. Everything's kind of precarious in here. Uh, I, I, I would like an external mount for my webcam, but alas, I have no room in this room. This room is like three meters by four meters. Uh, and most of that is taken up by a fucking king size bed, which I still haven't managed to get rid of. Um, but yeah. Anyway. That's my idea. Oh my goodness. What are you doing in my stream? Hey, Robin, how are you doing? I hope you were. Wales is 98% rain. Yeah, so's Manchester. It was pissing down today. We got a little bit of respite in between the funeral and the wake, but then after that, it was just constant rain, as per usual. Yeah, but welcome in, dude. How are you doing? I hope things are well. Just been talking about my shitter of a day. Funeral, illness, and then a tyre blowout on the M62 on the way home. One more look. <laughs> there it is. Caused me an hour and a half of freezing cold worry and misery. But what matters is that I got home. And I got home safely. If a little bit tired and under the weather. I had a revelation whilst at the funeral earlier. And that revelation is this. I am uh, absolutely fed up 
of my friends. This is very selfish, but it's true. I am fed up of my friends dying. I mean, that's obvious. And then playing awesome songs at their funerals, which then ruin those songs for me. Because now whenever I hear those songs, I think about my dead friends. It's a trend which must be stamped out. So when I die... I insist that the only song played at my funeral is Itsy Bitsy Teeny Weeny Yellow Polka Dot Bikini by Timmy Mallet and his backing singers. Uh, <laughs> have you taken meds for the leg? I've taken too many meds for the leg, you Mr. Cripple. Um, I'm on my second box of uh, cold and flu relief in like two days. I only meant to take eight tablets in 24 hours and the 16 in a box but that said i'm a big fucking guy so i think i could my body can handle a bit more of it like final countdown do, 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 do. admittedly i'm better than i was i'm uh i'm just really snotty and shit <laughs> at least i'm not having like the dizzy spells and stuff anymore but that said only a couple uh, only an hour and a half ago i took more meds and it does tend to, does tend to take the edge off but I've also lost four shifts this week. Uh, so I couldn't work today because of the funeral and because of my illness, I couldn't work Tuesday and they decided to replace me tomorrow and Saturday. So there's like 220 odd quid lost. <laughs> Just like motherfuckers. But hey ho, these things happen. I want to play a shot out of a cannon into the sea while they play a Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> Good shout. When Lottie and I were in Greece, uh, we went on a pirate ship to visit another Greek island. It was a really fucking good fun. But the, and, we, and as they left the bay, of the, the main marina, they blasted out the Pirates of the Caribbean theme tune. It was fucking awesome. And I asked the guy if he'd ever heard Ailstorm. And he was like, no, nah, I've never heard Ailstorm. I said, oh, mate, you've got to put it on. And he was like, oh, I don't like to test. It was Greek accent, but I ain't doing one of them. I don't like to put recommendations on in case of crap. I was like, mate, it's pirate music. You're going to love it. And he was like, mm, okay, I'll give it a go. So he played uh, Keelhold by Ailstorm, uh, and it was absolutely amazing. And he said to me afterwards, he says, right, I'm playing that on every single trip now. I was like, told you, man, told you. Trust in Chunk. <clears throat> but yes, all the fluids as well. Lots and lots of water. <laughs> this is the song that never ends. I don't think I'm aware of that song. Hey, Sarah, I love the man who recorded his voice and then had them put the recorder in with him. <laughs> I've not heard of that one either. I want my remains scattered around Disneyland. I don't want to be cremated. <laughs> Good one. Hailstorm. No, Hailstorm. Hailstorm are very different. Right. Sorry, Green Lung. I actually fucking adore you. You know that. But I've got to play this. So I'll probably get a copyright strike but whatever so this is ale storm uh, which is uh, they're originally from glasgow i believe although they all live in various parts of the world now because they're uh, very successful and therefore quite wealthy i think anyway this is uh, one of their most famous tracks and this is just pirate metal i hope you enjoy i'll just put it on in the background So yeah, on a on a boat, a pirate ship sailing the Greek waters, blasting this out with like a beer in each hand. <laughs> Yeah, they're on tour next year. I think I'm going to go see them. I went to college with a keyboard player, so I tend to get guest list every time they tour in exchange for freshly baked cookies. So, yeah. <laughs> Just made potato wedges in the air fryer for the first time, and mmm, oh, welcome. 
Welcome to the new world of air fried food delights. I fucking love my air fryer. And yes, potato wedges in them are. Uh, mm. I'm going to be air frying up the carrots and parsnips for Christmas dinner this year. My brother's got like a really fucking top of the line state of the art double drawed ale, uh, ale storm. Double drawed air fry. <laughs> I do make good cookies. The secret to a perfect cookie is to uh, refrigerate the dough for like three days before you bake your cookies. Make them so soft and tender. <laughs> Pack full of M&Ms as well. All the different M&Ms. You haul that filthy land lover send them down to the depths below. Make the bats that walk the plank with a bottle of rum and a yo ho ho. So the act of keel hauling is apparently when you wanted to kill someone on your pirate ship, you would tie a rope uh, around them and just go real fast and chuck them off. And, and as they would bounce on top of the water, they would they would like fall apart. Is there such a thing as bad cookies? I think there may be. I've made some bad cookies before um, when I didn't know how to make cookies. So yeah. I can't decide whether to grow my beard out again or not. I kind of want to just maybe shave off this middle bit and grow out the, like, the lemmy. I'm not sure. Burnt bad cookies. Yeah, they're not good. Anyway, that was Keel Hold by Ailstorm. I am going to switch to a game. It's a very, very simple, very repetitive uh, game. Oh, my God. Oh, no, the Steam the steam sale is on, and, the, and the, oh, my God, everything on my wish list is discounted. No, no, don't tempt me like this. Viscera cleanup detail, that's meant to be really good. Uh, who I think it was Senbar who suggested uh, that I play this. It's like, you, you basically, you go, you're on a spaceship, and loads of people have exploded, and you have to basically clean up all the gore. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in Viscera Clean Detail, you step into the boots of a space station janitor tasked with cleaning up after various horrific sci-fi horror events. Uh, so instead, instead of like, uh, you know, when you have to clean the houses in House Flipper, um, uh, you're cleaning up blood and bodies and stuff. That does actually look really fun. And now it's only £4.39. Bastard. That's a cat. All right, let me just check my money. It's not much. <laughs> if I can afford £4.39, I will. That might be a little bit more fun than just uh, dicking around on this uh, little indie digging game that I found. Right, what day is it? I've got the last seven days. I'm sorted for that day, that day, that day. I need petrol on that day. Yeah, I think I can afford that. Okay, let's see what else is on the wish list. It was £4.39, it's 60% off, that's pretty good. Oh, it's multiplayer as well, nice. Oh yeah, sorry Sarah, the Steam sale is live. Uh, I've put that on my wish list for some reason, but I don't know why, same for that one. Uh, that Night in the Woods is meant to be good, like a point-and-click adventure. Phantasmagoria is on sale for five pounds i've been told that it's a very good game but it might be a little difficult to stream because there's some pretty horrendous moments in it but it's a 90s real action point and click game back when like the sega cd was doing that shit uh raft is on for a tenner i've heard that's quite good carry on carrying as in carrying the crows that's really cheap but i don't remember adding that to my list a reverse horror game in which you assume the role of an amorphous creature of unknown origins, stalking and consuming those that imprisoned you. Ooh. This is the trailer. Oh, I love the art style. Whoa. Yeah, feel free, Max. Uh, just DM me your uh, ad link thing. Oh, man, this looks cool. But I'm assuming this isn't... Uh, 
It's like Dead Space, but we're the aliens. But I'm guessing this isn't gameplay footage. It looks too animated. Unleash the horror. Yeah, I wanted to play Raft, but it looks better with people. I really enjoyed the forest. Uh, I know Sons of the Forest is a thing, but I think I'd rather wait till it's out of early access. Although the response even to early access has been excellent. Wow, it's very manga. Oh, God. Oh, shit. Okay, that looks pretty cool. Is there actually gameplay trailer? Oh, wow, it's like flashback for the Mega Drive. Oh, I like this even more all of a sudden. But I'm the alien, not the people running around. Whoa. <laughs> oh, wow. It's like, it's a manner of mix between it's like flashback graphics, Abe's Odyssey, like level layout stuff. With a bit of like stealthy stuff in rock. This looks fantastic. But yeah, if anyone else wants to add me on Steam, please feel free. I'm not protective over my Steam account. Uh, my username is chunkrock666. Uh, but that looks freaking sweet. Oh, that's interesting because streamer mode's active. I have uh, it blacks out the Discord screen. <laughs> cool. Uh, so these are the things. So yeah, there's night in the woods. Uh, Shadows of Doubt was recommended by Dancing Stupidity. I can't remember why, but he said I would absolutely love it. But still, I don't like really paying more than 10 quid for a game. It'll come down more in the future. I'm not in any sort of rush. Scene Investigators was the... Um, the, the that's the sequel by the guys who made um, the Pains Creek Killings. Yeah, thank you for the friend request, Jato. I thought you already were my friend on Steam. That's weird. There we go. All good. Um, so, yeah, that's by the same people that made the Pains Creek Killings. With this one, you are put into a, a, a crime scene and you have to analyse all the evidence and find out who killed who or who did what and why. Uh, but that's just been released real recently. Oh, 24th of October. There we go. Final Fantasy VI, because I've never played it. I love the Final Fantasy games, and I've heard that that is the best of the old ones before Final Fantasy VII. Uh, and I've heard this fantastic, so I'm looking forward to playing that at some point. Peglin is like uh, Peggle, but apparently it's an RPG game. It's Matty again, played Sons of the Forest, and it's 100% crazy. The original Forest was amazing. Oh, Headbangers in Holiday Hell is only two quid. Right, that's two. Right, okay, back to the wish list. That was Beardy that recommended that one. Uh, where was I? Where was I? That does look like a really cool art style sort of narrative driven story. Uh, it looks really good. That is a good price, actually. I don't know if I'm interested in enough. This is the problem with Steam sales, it all starts fucking adding up. <laughs> Ah, oh, thank you, Max. I'll send, uh, I accept that as well. Um, if you found there was a demo that I played on the last Steam demo thing, which looked really cool. Park Beyond was the, is the kind of theme park simulator that I've been waiting for. Simple and stupid, not ridiculously complex. It looks like oh, mixed reviews, though. That's interesting. Because the, the, I, I watched, like, a, a, an early access Let's Play by, I think it was the Spiffing Brit. It looked really fun. Dredge, I've heard, is meant to be fucking awesome. Uh, like a really, really cool game. I don't really remember adding Bramble the Mountain King. I think I, I've, I have accepted it. Thank you, uh, Max. I appreciate that, dude. Um, Cozy Apocalypse Survival, you know, my kind of game. Escape Academy, uh, you know how I love my puzzle games. Someone recommended that. 
Dave the Diver is meant to be really good. Killer Frequency, that is a game where it's a horror game, but you are like a radio DJ and you're trying to solve the mystery of who the murderer is from your radio station by taking call-ins and stuff. Uh, and yeah, that's it. That's my wish list. And Vaudeville, the first AI-driven detective game. Mixed reviews. Experimental whodunit game based on... On latest AI technology uh, to generate one. dialogue in real time. Here today? No way they're actually going to yes. talk to me. This fascinates me. I'm a very open-minded and non-judgmental friend. <laughs> ah, you called me a friend. Does that mean I'm in the friend zone? <laughs> I see when I'm beaten. Excellent work, Saksabar. I'll get out of your hair now. All right, then. I just got giga chatted. What in the f was that? Who, who, what AI was that? What's giga chatting? Oh, hello there. I'm sorry, but do I know you? I'm a detective investigating some recent murders that happened in Bodville. A detective. How intriguing. This is uh, the first detective AI game. The name's Martin. Hmm. I'm a private detective. Hmm. Oh! I'm talking to you, Gretzky. Now shoot straight with me before I get cheeky. These AIs <laughs> gaslight you? So you talk to the AI and it responds to you. I mean, it sounds fascinating. Why are the reviews so mixed? You should buy this game if you don't care about winning and just want to mess around with the AI. I mean, that's kind of why it appeals to me. You should not buy this game if you're expecting a smooth the experience. I stepped off the train into the city of Vaudeville, I could feel the weight of its melancholy in the air. Even the mystery. Even the drizzle that clung oh, I'm not watching a 10-minute preview. That's fine. Uh, the reason I say is because the AI will lead you down several rabbit holes that go nowhere. The AI is actually pretty good at injecting several important clues in investigation. One NPC has straight up confessed to being responsible for attacking the three victims by not being involved in the murder at all. Right, that's this is this is fascinating. I grilled Mrs. Potter for an hour to get to, to admit she wears a C cup. So what are the bad ones then? Oh, Max, you're being ridiculously generous again. <laughs> I will check that in a moment. I will make something very clear. The story does not vary between players. The story is set in stone. There is only one true scenario. I purchased this game under the assumption the solution was procedurally generated just to find the use of a versatile AI chatbot. No, I didn't get that impression at all. The story is the story, and it's, it's how you... It's how you... Uh, um, it's how you uh, question the AI which causes uh, responses. This used to be such a fun AI playground we could take it on tangents and roleplay situation. Now it's so locked down, all of that spark has gone. Dev has responded to say you can re-enable the actions mark in the menu, but the other half of my review still stands. The AI is so railroaded now. I see, so I guess in because people are people. Uh this isn't worth twenty bucks right now. It's fun talking with things, but the game definitely is work. I expect that anyway. It's not gonna be perfect, it's the same one. Frustrating but fun. Take notes of sometimes AI mix. That's it's interesting. Okay. Max, thank you very much uh, for... Oh, you've bought me two buddy games. Thank you, dude. Let me just go to my notifications. Well, there you go. There were literally the two I was about to buy. Max, thank you. I appreciate that. Well, seeing as it was you that asked, uh, you, you that purchased, would you like to see me play right now Viscera or Carry On? Carry on, carry on, carry on. Carry on my wayward son. Oh my god, there's... Is that, oh, there's DLC. You bought me the whole thing, man. Dude. Thank you. I'd have been so happy with just the base game. <laughs> carry on it is. Right, okay, let me get this installed. The beauty of living with Valen is that we have ridiculously fast internet. Although it could be faster and cheaper, but I don't think he's uh, inquired into that just as much as... Uh, he probably should have done just yet, but he's a busy boy. Okay, uh, let's change the stream information to Carrion. 
Carry on my way That's going to be constantly in my head every time I say it. Oh, wow, it's a popular game. It's got over 10,000 followers on Twitch. Cool. Right, let's go for it then. Uh, I'm probably going to have to do a little bit of uh, fiddling with the system. I might not. Sometimes it just picks up automatically. No, it hasn't done it this time, so bear with me. Uh, do that and that. Okay, there we go. Uh, right. Oh, it's a controller-based game. Okay. But hey. The greatest time of the year Christmas special. Jesus. Surely I should have a uh, go at the base game first before I try and tackle a DLC. Uh, but I cannot say for sure. Oh my goodness. Oh, I love it already. The, the, the way people can create such amazing art using like a 16-bit art style. Fucking love it. I absolutely love it. I'm, I'm fascinated as well because I'm, I, I, don't, I haven't done it for a few years now. I used to be a big fan of Cross Stitch and Cross Stitch is basically... 16-bit art it's dots it's different colored dots which i guess all art really is if you're thinking about it just the more megapixels it is the more dots but i really like this shit i think i found it really really skillful to animate it as well is just insane tis christmas yeah but I, I need to play the original game for oh my goodness oh i'm breaking out <laughs> oh my god this is amazing Yeah, you better run. Right. Oh my god, this is... I don't know if anyone ever played... Uh... Did anyone ever play um, Alien 3 for the Mega Drive? Oh wow, I love the way I can just... Right. Can I break through anything? Try to run, try to hide. Break on through to the other side. Okay, I'm kind of stuck in... Oh, hang on. Ah, there was a, a vent. Oh, here we go. I'm gonna get my first kill from. I can survive in water. Okay, that's good. Aim with R. I see. And hold R2 to grab objects. Oh, amazing. My God, it's fast. That's just the way it is. That's fine. I suppose the speed is part of the fun. Was he on the shitter then? <laughs> oh, you better believe I'm here to kill you, boy. Oh, I hit him. Oh, yeah, half of him anyway. Oh, my God. This is incredible. I guess then I can't eat the doors. No. Ah. It's not going to be this easy all the way through. There's going to be a puzzle element or a difficulty spike somewhere. Music's fucking awesome too. Consume humans to regain biomass and grow in size. It's like some out of the thing as well. This is horrific. I love it. Even stupid. <laughs> you guys are all up very late. 
I mean, I'm not complaining in the slightest. I'm, I'm more impressed. Can I go through doors? Ah, squeeze in with the X button. Okay. Okay, I pulled a switch. What has that done? Ah! <laughs> Ooh. I want to see what's up here first, though. I was kind of worried the, the fan was going to suck me in, but it didn't. Huh. Anyway, up we go. Ooh, daylight. Crack in the wall. Spread biomass and save. Oh, wow. It's a blow my nose. Just like the Lost Boys, we sleep all day, party all night. You never grow old, Michael, and you'll never die. You must feed. God, I've not seen that in years. It's one of those ones I used to absolutely fucking rinse as a kid. Oh, sore eyes. Spread biomass, cheeky. <laughs> It's alive. Breach the BLSL for research ward. <laughs> Status breached. 75. Does that mean there's more to do in that past level? Seals breached 100%. Biomass samples lost 50%. I don't really understand what that means. You're eating worms, Michael. They're only noodles, Michael. <laughs> Eating maggots, Michael. How do they taste? So, what was that answering the question there? So, do I need to head back in there and get the other twenty-five percent of whatever was left? All right. So, biomass samples of humans. So, somewhere in here, there's a human. There's a door there that I've not got through, which makes me think that there must be a switch somewhere that I've missed. So, let's head back. Maybe it was in here. But now, I've, can I unswitch that once I've switched it? No, okay. It's a one time only deal. Oh, hang on. Is there a bit of body there? Yummer, yummer, yummer. Right, okay. So I can't just leave bits of body. Like there's half a dude there. Probably left some other bits of human elsewhere. Oh, it's a one way vent. Okay, that's interesting. Right, there might be a way. Oh, there's another switch there as well. Okay, well, I'm learning. I'm learning. I can come back. I'm guessing I can't press those switches. Oh, I can. Ah, because I'm not a human hand. I can't go in there. Interesting. Okay. I want to go this way. I can't go this way. Authorized personnel only. I am not authorized. Let's leave. Time soon. 
I love the movement noises. Ah, the switch. Which I'll push in a moment. I'm guessing it's going to control that, actually. So I'll take a good job in now. I know it's unlocked that one. Mm -hmm. Let me in, I'm hungry. <laughs> fleshy ones. Okay, I can't get through these. I love how I'm just leaving like viscera everywhere I go. That's pretty cool. I am up late, alpaca. I've had a fucking day. I have had a day. And I got in from my day and fell asleep for a couple of hours, so I'm quite awake. And rather than just lay in bed watching YouTube videos, which is what I was doing, I thought, fuck it, I'll come on stream. I'm really glad I did, because Max just gifted me a couple of new games, including this one. And this is sweet, dude. This is fucking awesome. Yeah, so I can squeeze in there. I'm guessing this is one of those games where you come back once you've got more powers and stuff. How did the date go? No, today was a funeral, dude. <laughs> My date is next week. And uh, I, got, I had a tyre blowout on the M62 on the way home, which was really shit. And I'm still feeling generally unwell, so I just had a really crap day. Don't wake Val up, he's alright. He's, Val is a ridiculously deep sleeper. Plus he's only just gone to bed, so it takes him a while to unwind. He usually lays in bed watching YouTube videos as much as I do. No, I've had a day. Sorry, I've had a day. You know when people say, Christ, I've had a day. Well, I've definitely had a day. Oh, this one's got a gun. So i got to be quick. Shit, okay. I made a noise. I know he's freaking out. Go all the way over there, because I'm going to go under into the water. for you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it so much. This is awesome. Oh, uh, yes, man. Uh, well, the, the uh, lady in question lives in Lincoln, so I'm going to drive down to Lincoln. Hmm. I believe we're going to go do some crazy golf and possibly some karaoke. Whoa. Spit my face. Oh, I see. I, I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What a day I know, right? <laughs> oh, this is. I love the art style. Am I going to get like a, a, a trophy for hitting all the light bulbs? Why haven't I eaten you yet? Yeah, okay. I'm guessing that's where you'd probably be a little bit more accurate with a with a keyboard and mouse on those bits. Yeah, should be a good laugh. I mean, so I've known this person for like 18 to 20 years. Ah! Who's still shooting? Oh, you are. Okay, where's my... Oh, I see at the top of the screen. I'm guessing that's my uh, health bar. What took so long? Um... I don't know. Situations? I mean, you know, you're never going to go out with someone if you don't ask them out. And it took me this long to ask them out. We've either, either of us have either been in a relationship or just hasn't been right. I don't know. I didn't think I was her type, to be honest. So, never bothered. But, turns out, you know. No, 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 that'd be daft, man. It's fine.
and eating the bodies gives you health back. Amazing. Ah, so it, 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 I believe there are three of these things I need to spread in order to open that uh, gateway. We'll find out in a moment. Yep, there we go. Second one done. But no, I've not been on a on a, a date date. Actually, that's a lie. No, I went on a date a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, and it was really, really nice. So that is a lie. Uh, but that was with somebody else. But that's fine. Every everyone involved is like Polly, so it's not like there's any sort of backwards shenanigans going on. I was hoping to be like a oh, squeeze in where? What into my sample tube? Ooh. New DNA absorbed, arachnotipsis, shoot a cobweb, trap your victims, or interact with objects. Okay. I don't want to retrieve biomass, do I? Oh, does that just mean refill with health? Right, I don't care. I get it. Is she watching stream? I don't think so. Possibly. And then I got a date with somebody else later in next year as well. I just went through, I, I'm, I, you know, I've mentioned before on stream that I'm feeling a bit uh, lonely and starved of, uh, you know, human affection lately. Uh, so I just asked a few people out. Some said no, some said yes, and that's great. Some are always going to say no, some are always going to say yes. But if you don't ask, you'll never know. When I was younger... Uh, I used to get absolutely fucking devastated by rejection. I would work up so much in my head the huge event of asking somebody out, like, oh my god, I can't, I'm gonna ask somebody out. Uh, this time, it's like, you, you go into it and it's like, hey, you know, you know I, I kind of kind of like you and all that. You fancy uh, going out for an afternoon and doing some fun and seeing if we click and if they say no, I say, hey, no worries, you know. Not a problem at all. You know, I'll see you around when I see you. Don't affect the friendship in any way. At least it done for me. If they say yeah, it's like sweet, cool. Let's go do something. Lucky bugger. No, no luck involved, mate. You just gotta, you just gotta ask. <laughs> Everyone's just as fucking. Uh, not everyone. A lot of people are just as. Uh, um, I was gonna say shy uh, as as we are. No, shy is not the right word. Um, everyone's hung up on their own neuroses and their own appearances. Um, you've, but we put ourselves, we put people on a, uh, like, I guess on a pedestal, thinking, oh, God, look how confident they are. I bet they fucking get asked out all the time. There's no way they'd ever go for me and blah, 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 blah. Fuck that shit. Ask them. Well, the worst they can do is say no. Actually, I'm going to say the worst they can do is, like, laugh at you and spit in your face, but then, Jesus Christ, why the fuck would you want to date someone like that anyway? <laughs> but no, as long as you, as long as you, approach with respect and aren't creepy or weird about it you know just be very very chill very casual hey how you doing i just wonder if you fancy maybe gonna get an ice cream sometime something like that uh and they'd be like either yeah that sounds cool or nah i'm good <laughs> yeah cool however don't be too vague don't say, so if you say something like, hey, do you want to go out for an ice cream? They might think you're literally just asking them out as a friend for an ice cream. However, I don't like to lead with, do you want to go for a drink? For two reasons. A, obviously my problems with alcohol. But B, also, I really don't like the idea of asking somebody out for a drink because alcohol can change people's boundaries and behaviours. And the idea that you want to get someone intoxicated so that they might then agree to do things physically with you always leaves a little bad taste in my mouth. So, And I, and I think it's, it's too easy to offer someone to out for a drink. Um, I like to buy tickets to things. Like, I bought tickets to go see Jason and the Argonauts screening at the cinema, and I asked somebody out on a date and said, hey, I've, I was thinking of, like, you know, asking if you wanted to hang out sometime. I've bought tickets to go see this screening. Do you fancy it? And they said, no, I don't really fancy that, to be honest. Uh, and I was like, hey, no problem at all. I took my brother instead. So you still get the you still get the event, but you just don't maybe go with the person you wanted to go with. Not that I've got any problem going to the cinema with my brother. Um, but yeah, they say confidence is key, and I disagree. It helps. Uh, it's 
it's being okay with rejection because the fear of rejection will stop you from asking and then you're never going to get fucking anywhere. Uh, as Tom Waits once said, fishing for a good time starts with throwing in your line. And it's true. You've got to, you've got to make that first step uh, for, it to, uh, for it to happen and, and be okay with people saying no. Just be like, hey, no worries. Cool. I'll, I'll go ask someone else. <laughs> I have a stupid hard time ex asking. I have rejection sensitivity dysphoria, so rejection can be actually physically painful to me. Dude, that sucks. I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, I, like I said, when I was younger, I used to be so fucking afraid of rejection that I would never ask unless I was blind fucking drunk and then it made, obviously made a tit out of myself. It was only when I hit my 30s that I started to be a lot more cool with rejection and that opened up a lot more doors and it was it was quite liberating um i'm having a bit of a struggle hitting 40 because i'm starting to feel like i'm a little bit too old uh, which is ridiculous and that's completely uh, a mental and societal thing but i'm working on it i'm working on it and clearly i'm working on it because uh the three people that I've ever been on a date or I'm going on dates with age it range from 30 to 42. Um, uh, so, yeah, age is just a number. As long as as long as I'm not like fucking, I'm not asking out like fucking 15 year olds or some shit. I say that because there's someone in the whole rock scene who's in a spot of bother at the minute. Nasty, nasty things going around about that person. No, no proof of it, but. No smoke without fire, I guess. Um, that being said, I've recently had a few confidence boosts from the lovely members of several communities, so there's that. Uh, I mean, yeah, again, did, did anything with anything like dysmorphia, because um, I, I do suffer from body dysmorphia as well, and I have done for uh, a very long time. It is all mental, and it's our, ooh, and it's our experiences that make things easier for us, I feel. And it's like because, yeah, it's, 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 oh, for fuck's sake, I think my wire on my pad's screwed. Right. Um, Stupidia, I was speaking to somebody re so many recently, and I didn't want to dive in feet first, took it steady. We messaged for about a week, all of a sudden I was ghosted. Okay. And that's, that's fine, that's how some people deal with it. Not everyone's polite, but you've got to be like, oh, okay, no worries. And... And off you go. Go find someone else. I think the I think the, the the worst thing I used to do was I would wait I would I would wait months to get up the courage to ask somebody out, and by that time I had formed an almost parasocial relationship with them in my mind that I was like, oh my god, I'm in love with this person because I've been been hanging around with them so long and I fancied them so long, you know, I I, I really like them, and I, it's, I guess you've got to ask before it gets to that point just in case they do say no and you, and you otherwise you'll be devastated and all that um so everyone i've asked out i've just been really like you know I've, I've, I've liked them uh you know genuinely had an attraction to them but it's not like when i used to fall in love from a distance and then get heartbroken i'm a bit stuck here oh i like a new skill what's that what is that oh the switch aha Timing for me is shocking. It's either too early or too late. It's neither, dude. It's neither. Uh, you say it's too early. Maybe it would never have been good timing. You say it's too late. Maybe it would never have been good timing. It's gotta. You just gotta ask people. You know what I mean? It's just gotta. And and be okay with them saying no. I know it can get really fucking disheartening after. Uh, after several rejections, and I've been there as well. You know, it's like, oh, fuck, you know, what's wrong with me? Why does nobody want to fucking, you know, hang out with me in an intimate way? But saying, why does nobody, when you've only asked, like, four or five people out, out of the hundreds, if not thousands of people, you probably know. Has that killed them? I hope so. 
And this is this is just my approach and opinion towards the whole thing through my experiences. I totally appreciate that everybody else's experiences will be very different. I didn't think about that. Damn you, you wonderful specimen. Oh, you. <laughs> Oh, that's not good. Right, so they can shoot through them things. Ah! Oh no, it actually killed me. Carry on my wayward son. I was, uh, hello, late experience, how you doing? I was going to leave uh, a witty comment on your Facebook post about dating profiles. As it happens, we're talking about dating at the moment. Uh, and I was thinking, rather than saying, what do you mean you don't like crappy PlayStation driving games? Um, you could see, you could introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Mr. I won't use your real name in case you don't like people using it on Twitch. But hi, I'm Mr. Experience. <laughs> Actually, that was so much a better introduction. I am Mr. Experience. I am a connoisseur of technological advancements in competitive uh, uh, competitive driving experience. <laughs> you gotta sell yourself, man. Oh, whenever I meet someone new and they ask me what I do for a living, I always say nothing that defines me as a person. <laughs> right, okay, so that was the first, like, actual difficulty spike I've had here so far because I got deaded. It's just rev it's reverted me back to that my last save point. Okay, okay. Right, okay. Um. Oh, can I? Get oh, oh, oh! They're, they're still dead, though. Oh, was I in here? I can't remember. I'm not sure anymore. I'm not sure of anything anymore. Oh, no, I didn't want to go down there, but I've gone down there. And, oh, I've ended up back here, but that's a one-way pipe. Right, okay, here we go. Max! You've been far too generous in here this evening already, but I, that said, thank you very much for the gifted sub to Le Experience. Kevin. You had the French called Let Incompetent. I watched that last night while suffering from illness fever. I, I genuinely had a fever last night. It was awful. So they're dead now? No, they're not. Ah! But they are stunned. <laughs> well, definitely dead now because I ripped the bugger in half. Whoa. Screams like Morty. Right, so now they're all stunned. Let's go down here and eat everyone, right? Not bad for a human. Give me all of the food. I was like, why are they still screaming when they've been cut in half? But it's these dudes down here, isn't it? They're the ones screaming. The scientists that don't have guns. Right, where to? Get rid of that door. I can't get to those guys yet then, can I? Because I don't have that switch. Nom, 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 nom. Kind of makes me want to eat a pot noodle. Christmas dinner pot noodles are delicious. Wait, right, I'm not the biggest pot noodle fan. I don't mind them. Festivals are usually the place where I eat them. But Christmas dinner pot noodle. Legit. Tastes like gravy and stuffing. It's fucking lovely. <laughs> Turn around. Bright eyes. Every now and then I'll eat your head. Oh, oh, we opened the door. Ah. Christmas dinner pot noodle. We have all the cool flavors. 
Do you get actual proper golden wonder pot noodles over there? Uh, OT. <laughs> OTC. Use L2 to echolate nearby hive crevices. What? Oh, it comes from down there. Okay, what's a hive crevice? Oh, they're coming from all directions now. What a way to go. Do apologise for disturbing the big talk going on. No disturbing at all, mate. I was lurking for a little bit and can mostly endorse chunks where it's very easy to overthink things and self-sabotage when it comes to love. Absolutely. And, and for me as well, love takes a lot of time. Uh, I usually start with lust. <laughs> or friendship. I, I have learned over the years. Um, it's actually the second time I had the conversation today because I was talking about this with uh, Kira on the drive. Either to or from Manchester. I can't remember when. But it was today. Um, and saying like, I've, 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 I've had many, many sexual partners in my life. That's not a brag, it's just something that's happened. Um, and I have found that I have no real interest at all in one night stands. They make me feel a little bit hollow and empty inside these days. They were fine when I was younger, but not so much anymore. And some of the best sexual experiences I've ever had have been with my friends. Um, but not everybody feels that way and again that's another thing we have to discuss as well if we talk about this is that everybody's experiences and what everybody um what everybody's looking for is different and you've got to find the people that are looking for the same thing as you i think i was having this conversation with someone from Cleo's community of the day, we really only get chicken, beef, or shrimp. <laughs> so do you, I guess you don't have pot noodles. You have cup noodles, don't you? That's like the American thing. Cup noodle. Whereas pot noodles are uh, extremely British, and we have all manner of flavours. Um, having recently discovered a sexual attraction between myself and an old friend, it was absolutely incredible. Hell yeah. Sex is great, but sex with passion? And fucking, yeah, it's it's great. I'm a fan anyway. But you've got to find your own path. You've got to find your own thing that works for you. We are all as unique as the fetish lists on FetLife. <laughs> I have one fetish on my FetLife account. Because I'm a bit of a gobshite, as you know. So my own fetish on Fet Life is uh, going with Betty, but thinking of Wilma. <laughs> Makes me happy, anyway. Right. So how do I get past? How do I get past these wooden things? I can't break them that way. Maybe it's a new skill I need to learn. <laughs> Um, good Christmas of the game. Okay, so, uh, hey, Dahata, how are you doing? Uh, I've never joined Fat Life. I'm far too vanilla. There's plenty of other people on there. I, 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 don't, I don't know if I really get on with Fat Life all that much. I hardly use it. Um, it's... A lot of it is just slimy weirdo creeps leaving horrendous comments on pictures of naked ladies. But then the naked ladies must enjoy it or else they wouldn't do it. Um, another is people all trying to out kink each other, which gets a little bit tedious at times. It's very cliquey. There's, it's, if you've ever been involved in like a, a music scene or a metal scene or something, then there's definitely fetish scenes and people get called out and cancelled and all this shit. I just watch it as more of a social experiment on human behaviour than anything. Uh, but yeah, plenty of vanilla people on Fat Life. In fact, a lot of people use Fat Life as a, a an opening step into kink in general because you don't have to be a, a, a gas mask wearing candle wax covered uh, 16 piercings through your bell end kind of fetish master to be on fat life you can just 
dip your toe in and see what it's about. Maybe you'll find a, a kink you never knew you had and find someone to explore it with. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just... Uh, it's, 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 it's a weird place. Uh, uh, so yeah, this game, I... So I am a... Sort of like The Thing. I'm sure you've seen John Carpenter's The Thing. And I have escaped in this weird sort of uh, a bunker, laboratory, whatever it is, and I'm trying to just be, I'm basically going around and eating everybody, and I guess I'm trying to escape into the wider world so that I can eat everyone in the world. Every scene is littered with gatekeepers, 100%, 100%. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe you should just make a Fet Life account, you don't have to put any identifying details, you don't have to put any photos on, just have a little look around. See if there's anything you like. There's pretty much every fetish on there. Um, as long as it has to be, you know, legal. But there's pretty much everything on there. Some stuff that I, I mean, I do, I do not kink shame. If as long as it's consensual between adults, then there is no fucking kink shaming from me whatsoever. But there's some things that maybe raise an eyebrow sometimes. I think, damn, that's a, that's an interesting kink. <laughs> You've never seen the thing, oh dude? It's like my favorite horror movie. Oh, well, that's a statement. It's in my top five favorite horror movies. It's absolutely incredible. It's so tense. The, 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 the creation of, of atmosphere and the, the sense of isolation uh, and, and the horror and the mistrust and everything. It's, it's a fucking masterstroke of horror. I, I cannot recommend that film enough. Don't watch the 2014 remake or whatever it is. You've got to watch the original one with Kurt Russell. Not a big film person, too busy playing card games. Well, you can you can take an hour and a half off. <laughs> There's also devotees uh, contacting us disabled people and making awkward and unwanted advances. Devotees? Hmm, please explain. I'm not sure what that means. I understand what you mean about people making awkward and unwanting advances. I used to see Lottie's inbox when she was on FetLife. Jesus Christ. Flooded. Absolutely flooded with morons. I used to really enjoy winding them up and replying for her. Um... And one time, uh, about a couple of years ago now, I joined a gay dating app for, uh, particularly for what we call bears, which are big, hairy, gay people. Um, and I hated it. I absolutely detested it. Within half an hour of signing up to the app, I had no picture, I hadn't filled in the bio, but my inbox was just flooded. Hey, do you want to fuck? Hey, do you want to come around and fuck now? Hey, come over and... I won't go that explicit because my mum's going to watch this VOD, no doubt. Um, but it's just like, Jesus Christ, no, I don't want to do any of these things. <laughs> what made you think you could just enter my inbox and, and ask me such vulgar things? And that's what it's like being a woman online. Uh, the thing isn't about the big orange dude from Fantastic Four. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. Uh, John Carpenter's The Thing is, is a fucking masterpiece of horror. I adore it so much. Um... An old co-worker, uh, as long as you don't finish shouting yabba dabba do. <laughs> oh no, there's an idea. I'm trying to think of who I know that I might end up in bed with and might appreciate that. <laughs> yabba dabba do! <laughs> anyway, um, an old co-worker I'm fond of saying, seven billion people on this planet, someone is bound to have that fetish. I think I've come across a fetish, I don't know if anyone has, but I haven't searched fet life. I don't know if anybody gets horny. I don't know if Valen said he gets horny when he's ill because he says he can't have it, so he wants it more, so that's bullshit. No, but there's getting a bit randy when you're ill, but there's I mean, actually being turned on by the sensation of being sick. Valen said he gets horny when he's ill because he can't have sex, so he wants it more. I'm thinking more like, does the feeling of nausea turn anybody on? Surely not, but hey, you never know. Uh, a devotee is someone with a fetish for disabled people. I will not be fetishized for something out of my control. Fucking good on you, man. You stand up for yourself. <laughs> that was a really, really poor choice of words. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> you know what I fucking meant, though. The thing became Monty. Oh, no. Yeah, like, right at the minute, I feel rotten. And my sinuses are all inflamed. I'm feeling sick. I've got a headache. I've, I've been ill all week. So the last thing on my mind is sex. I, but there's, is there anybody out there who, when they have these feelings of the, when they are ill like this and worn down, and does that turn them on? 
Nausea and vomit is indeed a fetish. It's called reflux affiliate. All right, to Google. I won't share my screen on this, but I need to see this. Okay, the first, uh, the first, res first response was from Reddit. Uh, what's the weirdest fetish you've encountered or the fetish you find the weirdest and can't seem to understand again We don't kink shame here. These are other people's opinions Reflux affiliate I had a one-night stand girl who wanted me to vomit on her during sex. Oh, Jesus Someone said feet. He said why don't hit on the foot fetish fam. We give the best massages I fucking love a good foot massage, but they don't turn me on but my god. I absolutely love someone rubbing my feet who knows what they're doing it's a great feeling you can vomit without being actually ill yeah yeah actually that is true i think it's different to what chunk said yeah it's not it's not the act of vomiting that makes people horny it's it's the f the feeling of being ill like does anybody out there get like get sick and have to get up and get wrapped up in a hot water bottle and because they're sick they're like oh my god this is turning me on so much surely surely no one has that uh this guy wanted to message me at first he seemed normal but then he asked if he could give me a haircut i wanted to know why the heck you would ask that and he said it turns him on cutting women's hair turns him on that's <laughs> fair enough I don't understand it, but I accept it. My weirdest first hand kink account was a co-worker who wanted my boss and I to squat over him and piss on him while he jacked off. I mean, that's pretty tame. He also wanted us to call him racial slurs and emphasize that he really wanted to see our thighs. Hmm. Yeah, there's nothing particularly weird in there. So yeah, reflux file is someone who is sexually aroused by vomiting, but it's the act of vomiting rather than the feeling of nausea, which is what I was referring to. I like sensual touches from like feathers, etc. That really gets me. That's I, I get that completely. I don't I don't have that, um, but I am very much a, a sensations kind of person, like like touching, stroking, really light scratching, that kind of thing. Um, lots of you know neck kissing and stuff i just i just like touching people <laughs> oh yeah i've it's only been there's only been one person ever that i've trusted enough to sub for but that was one hell of an experience i, I i've experienced subspace and that was incredible i can see why people get into that but for me that does take one hell of a lot of trust Anyway, back to killing everyone. Oh, the big door is open. Breach the military junkyard. Okay. Why is everything lost? I don't quite understand that, but maybe I'm not meant to yet. A fetish for giving others pleasure. Yeah, that's, I mean, it, uh, I believe it's called like a pleasure dom. That's certainly what I'm into. Getting other people off gets me off. Like I say to most of my sexual partners, I'm up for anything. Within reason, I don't really do like pooping or peeing, but I'm up for almost anything because if you're getting pleasure, I'm fucking getting pleasure. So yeah, I can relate that to that 100% OTC. Ooh, where am I going? No, no, they've sealed me in. That's not good. Oh, actually, no, I've accessed the mainframe. I haven't sealed me in. Have I just sealed my own doom? Fetish high five. <laughs> Helichopper. Oh, what the hell? I've, I've taken over someone. Okay. drone with me. Whee! Not quite sure where I'm going. Dead end, I think. Can I jump? Oh, that is very flashback. Even the way he stops mid-run, that's like almost like this is based on the, the, the engine that fl flashback was made on. That's really cool. 
like I said, I've been, I've been having a go at it about six hours a day. I'm not working. The rest of it, I'm somewhere doing some kind of work. So pretty worn out overall. You don't need me to tell you that you need to protect yourself, mate. But uh, obviously, you do. You you, need, you you know what needs to be done in your life. And here's my fairy godmother, King Queer. I'd like to grant wishes. <laughs> what a term for it! I absolutely love it. Yeah, flashback. Someone mentioned to me yesterday on stream, I think it is, that there is that there is a sequel now, Flashback 2. I've got it on my wish list, but it's like 30-odd quid. I am not paying that for it because um, I played the... Oh, I think I, I looked at the reviews of the Flashback remake and they were slammed it. They said it was terrible, so I've got no faith in the Flashback 2 game. So it's on. It's one of those games that I've put on my wish list and eventually, a couple of years or whatever, it'll like drop below a fiver and I'll be like, yeah, okay, I'll give that a try. I remember I got flashback on the morning of my, I want to say, 10th birthday. And I woke up that morning at the end of my bed was my presents. And I got up really early before school and my presents were flashback and a tube of Pringles. Um, Pringles were a big no-no in our house, A, because I had a weight problem, B, because they were just really expensive and we were very, very poor. I only got new computer games that either birthday or Christmas or two a year basically so when I got flashback I was thrilled absolutely thrilled and I played it over and over and over and over again and I loved it so much yeah like once a year I was allowed to take away which was also really far too expensive which is why it was a proper treat I think when spring comes and I'm fully out of debt, I'm going to give up one job. I really, really enjoy the job back in August. I'm going to stick with it and drop the other job. Do it, dude. I mean, if you're working hard to get yourself clear of debt, eh, maximum respect for that. Um, debt is such a fucking horrible thing to be in. I'm, I'm grateful at the moment that my only debt is with my dad. He bought my debt when I broke up with Lottie. He gave me the money to pay off my debts, and now I owe him. So at least I'm not, you know, paying any interest, and my pay repayments are manageable. And it's not affecting like my credit score or anything. I was very, very fortunate. Best Pringles flavor. Oh, mmm. I mean, I'm a big fan of the sour cream and chives because they're just the old school, you know. I am also a big fan of just salted. Salted Pringles are delicious. Um, however, I am also a big lover of the prawn cocktail ones. They're not that easy to find anymore, but they do exist out there cheddar cheese and sour cream two chips at the same time wild man oh <laughs> um there was a thing on i was listening to bbc radio 2 in the car the other day and there's a thing where pringles have come out recently and said um that they only flavor one side of the crisp and it's the side that doesn't fit on your tongue so there's the underside, which fits perfectly on your tongue, or you can flip it over, and that's where all the flavour is, so you're meant to eat them upside down. Prawn cocktail Pringles are delicious. Again, flavours in different countries are vast and varied. Um, but yeah, yeah I, do like the, I do like the prawn cocktail ones. The salt and vinegar ones are nice, but they have too many, and they make your tongue bleed because they're that fucking salt and vinegary. A patch of ants of, of what antediluvian moss Ooh. the unit serving of pringles is one tube if i think you've had struggle for a whole tube i get a bit sickly after a while big fan of my salsa dips though oh god i fucking love salsa and there's something about like shop bought salsa which is junky that just tastes better than any fresh homemade salsa unless you're making like a proper homemade mexican feast in that case a proper refreshing lime and coriander or cilantro uh, uh salsa is just mm, mm. i'm salivating talking about this um now i need to make fresh salsa yeah man do it i, I need a, i need a new food processor man bro that's uh, something i'm hopefully going to get in the sales in january i've got my eye on a good kenwood one which uh, i think is it's refurbished at 59 quid at the minute but the place where i buy from usually does january discounts as well so i'm looking at that look into that um i was gonna say uh sour and chive eight many tubs then you see the cost of pringles as of late and think i must mortgage my house <laughs> mm. 
I am happy to trade recipes with anybody. You know how much I adore cooking. It's such a huge part of my life. Um, one day I'd very much like to open my own catering business, preferably a festival food van, but it's having the initial startup cash that's an issue. One day, one day, I'm in no rush. Um, I was going to say, when I did go to the doctors on Monday, he, so he, she bollocked me again uh, for having low vitamin, vitamin B12. And so it was like, we've, sp we've spoken about this, Mr. Chunk. You know that you need to keep your vitamin B12 levels up. This is why you're feeling run down and probably a bit like down in the dumps and stuff. And you're susceptible to these colds and whatnot. Um, so... I have to start eating more red meat and I don't like eating meat because I'm I love animals but my health is more important so uh, I went to the shop earlier and I've got a massive fucking hunk of pork uh, downstairs in the fridge and tomorrow I'm gonna make peri peri pulled pork wraps I'm looking forward to it immensely chunks burger man absolutely uh, that's kind of what I want to go for and I identified species of tube effects worms Ooh. The Hatter, one thing I did learn, now that I have health insurance and stuff, I have high blood pressure, working on lowering it, same. Uh, when I went to the doctor, they clocked me at 210 over 130, Jesus, that's like heart attack levels, dude. But the change of diet, uh, diet and some meds, I'm down 1595 average, that's also my average at the moment as well, but that is with medication. Um, it is my intention in the new year can't be asked before then but the new year is going to really going to sort out my eating i've started training again i've started weightlifting again i'm loving the feeling of my muscles growing in strength again uh but i really need to sort out my diet because i'm far too much uh, uh uh an eater of convenience at the moment and i really need to get back into proper nutrition and food prep i know all about it like i can i could write a book on nutrition uh but i need to actually put it into practice <sighs> Goat. Goat will fix you right up. It is not an easy meat to get in this country, my dude. At least not in your regular supermarkets. I guess some of the intercontinental and halal food stores might have quite a supply of it, but I've not looked. Uh, but maybe I can have a look at that in the new year. We've certainly got plenty of those stores in Hull. Uh, my boss came in to work the other day with uh, chicken hearts. Really cheap. Really quite nice as well. Very, very easy to overcook though. Right, so I think I've seen everything in here. And we do have a lot of lamb in this country, but it's very expensive. I know what to do, but the cheeseburger is already right here. I mean, at least I, when I do make cheeseburgers, I tend to, you know, make my own burgers and... Uh, make my own patties and stuff like that but yeah there is definitely a, a, a convenience within me that's just like ah oh, fuck it I'll just get someone else to do it <laughs> yeah lamb is crazy expensive then again in this country at the minute so is beef beef is ridiculously expensive like unbelievably expensive it's ridiculous I don't like eating beef anyway because cows are just giant dogs but yeah, uh, if I'm going to eat anything, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of eating pigs either, but I, I, I've got to, I've got to put my health first. Ah. Oh, plant C4, shit, run away! Don't stand next to the C4! Oh, I just got some shiitake mushrooms earlier. My nut roast that I'm making for Christmas dinner for my mum, my brother and his wife uh, will have uh, pot pot potticello mushrooms, shiitake mushrooms, and what we call chestnut mushrooms, but I think they're called somewhere else in America. Portobello shiitake, is it like portachini or something? Insects are super high in protein and B vitamins. I guess not really not easy to get in this country unless you want the uh, like the, the honey roasted, sugar coated, additive covered ones. Uh, otherwise, I'd, I'd eat insects, no problem. Much rather eat insects than animals with fucking pain responses.
Right, so I'm out of the computer. So the computer things let me see what's going on in the human world. So I'm guessing at some point these humans are going to come and get me. Oh, I can tell my... Uh... Oh. <laughs> That's interesting. One true cripple. I never thought of looking on... Amazon for edible insects. However, I'm going to do that right now. Actually, I just googled. What have we got here? I think it's because it's because uh, it's a. Uh, I guess it's kind of a fad. They're probably going to be really expensive. Actually, there's a there's a website eatgrub.co.uk. To mind, that is actually a fucking really. It's a really good. And I mean, like, a really good idea. Uh, a name, sorry, Eat Grub, because, you know, grubs. Do I have to send you some stuff that I'm going to be trying for the New Year's? Maybe you might like them. If you want to actually physically send me things, uh, yes, absolutely. I believe, I will have to double-check with him, but I believe Valen has a PO box again that he's willing to let me uh, share. But I will ask him in the morning that, see if that is the case. If you want to send me links of things to buy myself, please feel free. My... Uh, you can have a... I mean, I don't... I never pay attention to my Twitch whispers, but you can always DM me on Discord, no problem. B12 is stored in liver. So, oh, liver and honey, is that right? Okay. Does it have to be a... Does it have to be a specific... Uh, animal's liver? Like, does it have to be, like, cows? That really... Do oh, especially lamb, apparently. Lamb livers. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, Discord is good, no worries. There's a dish in Mexico called Sha Chapa Lines, forgive me the pronunciation. Roasted and spiced crickets with lime juice and chilies. Oh, Jesus Christ, that sounds good. Right, so we're going gonna, we're gonna to explore this together. Oh, no, we're not. That's the wrong screen. Why is that? I've done that. Bear with me, friends, actually. There's nothing on there that I don't mind people seeing. I'm just wondering why it's done that. Oh, sod off. Right, that's not it. There it is. Right, okay. Chapulines. Chapulines. I love the Mexican, the Spanish and Mexican language. I'd love to learn it one day. Right, so like these all look like, like, yeah, roasted crickets and stuff. I'd rather get... Oh, wow, natural cricket protein powder. What? Okay, let's have a look at this. The edible insect starter pack. I need to boost my vitamin D. No, it's not a gay joke. I take a daily vitamin D supplement. Well, I take a multi -vit. So these are edible crickets, edible mealworms, buffalo worms, and grasshoppers. Uh, for product descriptions, please see individual page. I mean, sold out anyway, but... Products of the Netherlands. You see, they're all salt and vinegar, salted toffee and stuff. I don't want that. I would just want the raw things that I could, like, say, cook myself. This is fascinating. Can I...? Ingredient 100% ground cricket. Wow. Hello. Hmm. Website's not that great. Right, edible grasshoppers. There we go. Are these just... Gram for gram, edible grasshoppers contain more protein than beef. Grasshoppers have a delicate, nutty flavour, perfect for roasting or deep frying with a tempura or batter, serving with sweet chilli sauce. What about just using them as like a, a mincemeat? Before you begin, make sure to remove the legs and wings. Okay. The Stay Fresh Pack contains 9 grams... It's 15 to 19, so it's a bit like prawns, you have to take the, the shells off and stuff. Insects are great food, but if you're allergic to shellfish, you may be allergic to insects as well. Right, okay. It's a shame I can't make these pictures bigger. 20 gram pouch is 12.99, but that is... We're talking like 40 grasshoppers in there. Let's see the kilo, what, 250 quid? Fuck! That's ridiculous. Oh, the 20 grams are out of stock. That's ridiculous. They're out of stock as well. They were out of stock a minute ago. 
Jesus, I mean, like, although I, I can see what you mean about them being um, really nutritionally excellent for us, and I would eat the fuck out of insects. I would have absolutely no moral quandaries eating insects at all. Um, I, they are so expensive. Like, that's just, that's insane. So these are stair frying, but they're really expensive. Sprinkling on soups. Can you want some mealworms on top of your soups? Fascinating. This protein, cricket protein powder is also very fascinating. Maybe I'm in the wrong place. Like, maybe this is like a, a, a shop that specializes in expensive shit. Crunchy critters. Uh, Thailand unique. Edible insects for sale since 2003. Where's Doggo Duck when we need him? He's our man in Thailand. Chocolate covered scorpions. Jesus fuck. Oh my god, I can't begin to imagine. That, that looks horrible, but I'm also kind of fascinated. Edible black Asian forest scorpion. Native to Town Service Asia, delicacy to those living there. One of the few species known to be edible. Do we have like a, a nutrition label? Can't read that's too small. That's a hard note from me. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd struggle to eat something like that. At least crickets look, you know, not as violent. Aha, so this is crickets. Amount per set, 15 grams, has only 70 calories. Quite high in cholesterol. Not bad, not bad. You're like 50% protein. That's messenger at this time of night, especially when covered with chocolate. Think of the best cheese ever paired with chocolate. So are they soft on the inside then? I'm not sure if I'd fancy that. Ah, it was from Let Experience. Thank you, dude. Um, apparently my uh, B12 deficiency is so... Uh, it, it, my B12 deficiency is due to my gastric bypass that I had 20 years ago. Um, so I have to have injections. But they did say that supplements and, uh, and eating B12 would really help keeping them up as well. So I've got grasshoppers, crickets, queen weaver ants, Edible silkworm poopé. <laughs> Giant water bugs. Oh, they look vile. Looks like eating cockroaches, man. Edible water scorpions. It's hypercritical. I happily eat prawns. I fucking love prawns. Aversion to eating insects. Well, aren't prawns just underwater insects? But yeah, prawns are delicious. Right, so each bag contains two water bugs. Again, no nutrition information on this one. Which is a shame. Okay, this is interesting. I hope you don't mind joining me in watching this. got a face. I don't know. Is, 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 it, is it sentient? Dude, that one's still alive, isn't it? Oh, I don't want to watch that. Or is that one dead? I can't tell. Yeah, oh, I don't know. I, I, just think, I just don't want to eat animals anymore. But my doctor's saying, dude, you've got to eat animals. <laughs> Fuck you, man. I, I, I often have a, a, quite a problem, like a moral problem with eating animals. I, I have done for years. I do still eat them. Uh, it's dead by that point. Well, that's good, but still, that was a bit much. Although, this is what some things, uh, some people, uh, well, at least this is what I call the Disneyfication of animals. It's like, like fucking Pixar films will teach us that bugs are alive and shit, like, like sentient, when they're fucking not. 
But I also don't think that it should be up to me to decide if something should die because it should cease to live because I want either the taste or the nutritional benefits. It's a constant inner turmoil. Where am I going? I've been here because that's uh, been switched. Caution, unprotected mine shafts in this area. And they call it a mine. A mine! <laughs> To be my foodie friends. I don't put meeting humans. I'd be a cannibal. <laughs> I wonder if there's a place where you can go where, like, you can buy cows or buy beef and pork where the animal has died from natural causes. <laughs> I it just died of old age. I'd eat that. That'd be fine. That hasn't been bred and killed for my benefit. with L2 to taunt enemies. <laughs> I reach. Reach this. Oh god, I'm running a bit low on health actually. to wear it off. I'm starting to feel quite sick again. Get my fire man. I've saved it and restored. Okay, I'm going to leave it there, my friends. Thank you so much for spending the last almost a couple of hours with me. I didn't expect hardly any of you to be on, but there you all were, being wonderful as always. Thank you very much for the raid, for the uh, gifted subs, the sub, and, uh, in, and the game from Max. I really appreciate that. Some fascinating programs around. Hey, hey, Queen Cat. Around roadkill, especially in cold climates. To make sure animals picked up immediately after it's hit, they inspect it so it's safe to eat. Here's a here's a thing. In the UK, if you um, uh, if you run over like a pheasant in the country, it's illegal to open the car door, put it in your car, take it home, and eat it. However, if you come across a pheasant that has been killed. You're quite welcome to uh, take it home and eat it, which is kind of weird. Hey, Lurkin's loving, no worries. No, thanks, for the, thanks for your generosity, Max. Thanks, everybody, for being here. And uh, we've had an education this evening on sex relationships and edible insects. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? Right, okay. Um, got a couple of people on I could raid. Uh... Who shall I go for? I, read, I do read that person quite a lot, but they've had a break from streaming, so it's really nice to see them back in yet. Yeah, fuck it, I will. She's a lovely person. Uh, this is one of our Australian friends. Currently doing food and drink, apparently. What are you making? Oh, Christmas cookies. Oh, no. It looks like they are away from... Oh, it's because they've been on for like 12 and a half hours. They're probably asleep. Okay, we're not going to wait you. Yeah, yeah, laws are very different everywhere. I'm not, I'm not 100 percent sure in all of the laws of roadkill, uh, but then again, there's not many things, not many animals roadkill that you'd eat in this country. I need to spell this right. So we're going to go and see Pad Thai. Actually, let's make sure they're doing something. 
yeah, they are. Okay, wonderful. I'm going to look into more uh, insect eating. Little ones I think I can handle, but not big ones with faces. Right, we're going to go and see Pad Thai anyway. Um, God, my voice is giving out and everything. Yeah, take, thank everyone for being here. Thank you for that, J2. Um, if, you, if, you, if you'd like to copy the raid message, please feel free to do so. I will, I'm, not, I'm not pressuring anyone to do it. It's, uh, it's, uh, it, does, it doesn't bother me. We're going to go see Pad Thai, who was playing Sea of Thieves. Uh, is this the one that was meant to... Is this come out recently? Or is this one that's been out for ages? I can't remember. There's like a new pirate game that's been in development hell for years. I forget the name. This doesn't look like it though. Anyway, I, I am not. Uh, I, I, my, my, my role in my job has finished now. I will not be going back to work. Uh, it was only a very short, temporary thing anyway, but that's why I've been busy these past like six weeks, is because I got six weeks worth of work. So I uh, made here while the sun was shining. And I will speak to you all soon. And all the best. Love you all to bits. Thank you very much. And take care. Bye bye.